right, my friends, I am on page PM 7.7 .7 in our ELA practice book. Let's take a look at the letter patterns we're focusing on today. K, N, W, R, G, N, and M, B. Keep those in mind when we're going over these pictures and how we spell the words. K, N is going to make the N sound, just like in the word knee. W, R is going to make the R sound, like in the word wreath. G, N is going to make the N sound, like in new. And M, B is going to make the M sound, like in crumb. Number one was a picture of a gnat. They believe that gnat is spelled G-N-A-T. So let's go ahead and trace that. And we're gonna circle the correct spelling for the rest of them too. Number two is a picture of a lamb. How would you spell lamb? L-A-M. If you guessed L-A-M-B, you are absolutely correct. Remember, as strange as it looks, sometimes M-B just makes the M sound, like in lamb or crumb. Number three is a picture of someone knitting. So how would you spell knit? N-I-T, knit. If you guessed K-N-I-T, you are absolutely correct. Remember, strange as it looks, K-N sometimes makes just the N sound, like in knee. Number four, our word is right. How would you spell right? W-R-I-T-E. Remember, W-R makes the R sound like in wreath. Number five is a sign, a stop sign. How would you spell sign? S-I-N, sign. S-I-G-N. Remember, G-N makes the N sound. Number six is a thumb. How would you spell thumb? Th-a-m, thumb. T-H-U-M-B. Number seven is a knife. How would you spell knife? K-N-I-F-E is the correct spelling. And number eight is a picture of a wrist. How would you spell wrist? R-I-S-T, wrist. W-R-I-S-T. I'm gonna turn to the next page. All right, on page PM 7.8, We've got to read each sentence and decide which of the words in our word box would make the most sense. Our words are before, could, people, today, warm, and were. Number one says, what do you do on a blank day? Which would were, I'm sorry, I can't talk. Which word would fit best for number one? What do you do on a before day? What do you do on a could day? What do you do on a people day? What do you do on a today day? What do you do on a warm day? Or what do you do on a were day? If you guessed warm, you are correct. What do you do on a warm day? That makes the most sense. Some blank go to the beach. Would it be some before go to the beach? Some could go to the beach? Some people go to the beach? 
some today go to the beach or some were go to the beach. Some people go to the beach. That is the correct answer. We blank there on a Sunday. Is it we before there on a Sunday? We could there on a Sunday? We today there on a Sunday? Or we were there on a Sunday? We were there on a Sunday. That makes the most sense. It is too cold to go blank. Which word would fit best there? It is too cold to go before. It is too cold to go could. Or it is too cold to go today. It is too cold to go today. Number five says, we'll wait for a hot day, blank we go again. Is it, we'll wait for a hot day before we go again? Or we'll wait for a hot day, could we go again? We'll wait for a hot day before we go again. Moving on to page PM 7.9. This is all about past tense verbs. We've gone over past tense verbs before, so hopefully this is just review. Remember, past tense just means something that happened already, happened in the past. It is not happening in the present, and it's not happening in the future. Something already happened. Let's look at their example. To make a verb tell about the past, add ed to the end of many regular verbs, like look becomes looked. If a one-syllable verb ends in a vowel and consonant, double the final consonant and add ed, just like from stop to stopped. You had to add that extra p in there, don't forget. If a verb ends in a Y with a consonant before it, change the Y to I and add ED, just like from hurry to hurried. I think it'll make a lot more sense as we go through these. So number one, they gave us an example. Last week, I hurried to the mailbox and we see here the verb is bolded. So we're gonna do that for this all of the other sentences. We're gonna take that verb and make it something that happened in the past. So if I was going to turn mail into a past tense verb, how could I do that? I blank you a letter. It would become I mailed you a letter. All I had to do is add ed because it's a regular verb. I mailed you a letter. Already happened in the past. Number three, you blank right away. And our verb is reply. How would you make reply into a past tense verb in this case? You blank right away. You replied right away. Past tense already happened. Number four, I was so happy I blank up and down. And our verb is going to be hop. How would you change hop to be a past tense verb? I was so happy, I blink up and down. I was so happy, I hopped. Now, because this one is a one syllable verb, ending in a vowel and a consonant, I had to double that P. 
So H-O-P-P-O-E-D. And number five, today I blink a welcome sign. And our verb is print. Oh, and they forgot a period here. Oh my goodness, I will add that in for them. Today I blink a welcome sign and our verb is print. How would you make print a past tense verb? Today I printed a welcome sign. Moving on to page 7.10. Once again, keep in mind, these are our letter patterns that we're focusing on. K-N, which makes the N sound. W-R, which makes the R sound. G-N, which makes the N sound. And M-B, which makes the M sound. They did number one for us. It is a sign, a stop sign. And they believe it is spelled S-I-G-N. We're going to do the same thing for the rest of the words. So let's take a look at number two. What is this girl doing? It looks like she is climbing some rocks. So how would you spell the word climb? I'm C L I M B climb number three is a picture of a knot how would you spell the word knot N -a K-N-O-T. Number four, it's a kind of bird, it's called a wren. How would you spell wren? R-E-N. W-R-E-N, wren. Number five is a picture of a wrench. R -n -ch. How would you spell wrench? W R E N C H. Wrench. And last, we have a picture of a knight. How would you spell the word knight? N I T. K N I G H T. Night.